Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode number 127 of Small Engines Questions and Answers. And thanks again for tuning in today's episode. Now before I get started today, I just want to show you guys a book that I won in a draw from a YouTuber. What it is is a book on Captain Sullenberger, the captain that glided a plane on the Hudson River and saved everybody aboard. This YouTuber 99 Carnot was making a draw for this book. I put my name in and I won it. Usually I don't win too many things online. I just wanted to show you guys the book and also his channel name. Make sure to check out his channel. It's all about watching airplanes at airports. You guys may enjoy it. I'll put the link to his channel under today's video. So thanks again to Steve 99 Carnot for this book. Also I want to show you guys this old Iron Horse motor. This old iron horse is a two-stroke engine. The guy said it was on an old cement mixer. I think he said it was the late 40s or 50s, something like that. At this point, the engine has no spark. I would like to get it running. I'm only going to keep it to display in my shop, but it's always nice when it's running anyways. And here are the specs on it. There's the model and serial numbers. So if anybody knows where to get parts for this old engine, please let me know. What I'm trying to do is get it to have spark again. And here's something else interesting that came in the shop this week. Two old mopeds. One is a Honda. The other one, I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it says Caddy on the fuel tank or something like that. And this one here is 49.9 cc's. They're actual mopeds with the pedals. I haven't had time to look at them, but if I get them running, I'm just going to make a brief video about these two mopeds. Also, if you do know where to get parts for these, please let me know. Also, if you know what make that is, just post a comment. To start us off today, the first question is about a steel 028 chainsaw. It's an older saw, and the owner is wondering why the saw won't shut off when he turns the switch off. Well, I don't have an 028 in my shop right now, but I do have an older 026 and the switch system will be very similar, if not the same. And what I've noticed that often happens is the little terminals here that are attached to the plastic parts, sometimes they don't touch together properly and your saw will not shut off when you actually turn the switch off. This is the off position and sometimes you have to wiggle it and then the saw will stop. Sometimes it will go to stop and start up again. So what you have to do sometimes is take off the air filter and the parts here and maybe even take off the lever here. Be careful because it can easily break as it's made of plastic. And what I do sometimes is I just bend back that terminal at the back or the spring loaded part of it back there so that it touches the wire going inside the red plastic piece here. And this is what I'm talking about here, the wire with this terminal. Sometimes you can pull it out, turn it, put it back in tighter. And like I said, you push the other part so that it goes on to this terminal in a tighter fashion. And that should do the trick. Anyways, I see this often on steel saws and that's how I fix the problem. Now, if your parts are really damaged, you may have to replace this part over here and the terminal on the wire that goes inside the plastic part. And one last thing is that some steel saws have a wire that's made of metal that grounds this part of the saw to the back end of the saw and if it's broken your switch will not work the saw will always be on so make sure that if your saw did have a wire to ground the front of the saw to the back part of it that it's in good condition if you're not sure if it has one or not just get a parts list look it up to see if it did have one and go from there and my next question a YouTuber asked me, is there a fuel filter on a Tecumseh lawnmower engine? Well, my answer to that is yes. It's just simply a screen built inside the fuel tank. And I've got a fuel tank here that came off of a Tecumseh lawnmower engine. And if you look inside there where the pin is, you can see the screen. That screen's there to basically stop impurities and dirt from going inside your carburetor. A lot of people don't know that there's a screen there and they're not sure if there is a fuel filter because they don't see one in the fuel line and a lot of people don't know that the screen's there. It may not stop everything like water and different things like that but it will stop most of the dirt. Now if you wanted to you could add an extra inline fuel filter if you wanted. In my next question a YouTuber asked me why does the carburetor on my weed eater constantly drip fuel even though I've rebuilt it with a complete repair kit? 
And when I say complete repair kit, I mean the carb kit that has the needle valve included in it. Now one possible cause to this YouTuber's problem could be that the fuel cap isn't venting properly. And you just heard a bit of pressure here when I released the cap, so there is pressure that builds into these fuel tanks, and if the cap isn't venting properly, it's going to build so much pressure that the gas will be forced out of the carburetor, it's going to drip and flood your machine. There's a small duckbill valve built into the fuel cap, and sometimes these go defective, and the tank doesn't vent anymore. Sometimes I've seen where the duckbill valve has come out and fuel was constantly pouring out of the fuel cap. So in either case, just go buy a new cap. They're not that much, around five bucks, and that should solve your problems. That's assuming that everything else is okay on your machine. Now, usually if your machine runs good, you don't need to replace the carb kit. You may start by replacing the fuel cap first. It's cheaper, it's easier to do and it may solve problems so that you don't have to take it into a small engine shop. And while I'm on the subject of gas caps that don't vent properly, if you have a Tecumseh lawnmower that had a metal dish like this in the fuel cap and it's gone, your fuel tank will not be venting properly anymore. The symptoms associated with this will be that your lawnmower will run for a few minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes, then it's gonna start sputtering and die off. You will release the cap, then it will run, it may run the next day for another 10 to 15 minutes or less and start all over again. So if your mower had a cap with addition here and it's broken, just get a new cap. The new caps are superseded with a rubber lining inside and they no longer have a dish here when you buy a new one of these. So again, the same principle will apply to your lawnmower as it did with the weed eater over here that I just showed you. In my next question, a YouTuber has an Echo Backpack blower like this. He has a PB265L. This is a 260L. Now it's going to be pretty well the same machine, so I'm going to show you guys this one in today's video. Now what happened to his is it had no compression anymore. He took it apart and the rings were stuck on the piston. The question he asked me is, can I unstick the rings on the piston and reassemble the machine and use it? Well, my answer to that is yes, as long as they're not scored, that the cylinder is in good condition and that the piston as well is in good condition. You can unstick them, reassemble the engine, and it should run. I'm saying this because I've done that myself. You can also add a new set of rings when you reassemble it, and it may give you better compression once you have it reassembled. I do have a video that shows where I took one of these apart that had no compression and the rings were stuck on it. Now, I haven't made a follow-up video showing that I did put it back together and it did run. What I'm going to do is put the link to that video of me taking it apart and showing it to you guys so you can go take a look. It is a common thing that does happen on these. I've seen it many times. I've had many questions about them with the same problem. And again, my answer is you can unstick them and put it back together and use it. But that's as long as there's no scoring on the internal parts. The other day I ordered some emulsion tubes for Tecumseh carburetors that go on lawnmowers. And as you can see here, one of them looks different than the other. Now they're both the same part. As you can see, it's the same part numbers over here. But one of them is much shorter than the other. Now the correct part is this one here. As you can see, this one's missing that whole bottom part. So if you've ordered a part and you receive it and you're not sure if it's correct or not, just go look on the internet for a picture of an original part because you never know. Some people could get a part like this not knowing that it's defective and never figure out why their machine won't run. My point is to show you guys that some factory defects do occur from time to time in the manufacturing of these parts. A few weeks ago I posted a video of me adjusting the valves on a Cub Cadet lawnmower and I've had a lot of questions in regards to that procedure. People are asking me would it be the same procedure on other four cycle engines with overhead valves? Well my answer to that would be yes. Parts may look slightly different, but the same principle will apply when you adjust the valves on an overhead valve engine. And it was a lawnmower like this, a Cub Cadet with overhead valves. And it would also be the same procedure to adjust the valves on this Kohler engine, which is on the Lawn Boy lawnmower. And on this one here, the valve lash is too small, so the valves are too tight. Now the symptoms this lawnmower is having is that it will not start at all. Also, when you go to pull it over, it's really easy to pull over, just like if the spark plug was not installed. So you do not feel any compression or resistance whatsoever when you try to start it. And here's how you can tell if it's overhead valve, OHV. 
This is a knockoff engine. It's made by a Chinese company. You will find this engine on a lot of MTD products. And another question that came up as well is what would cause the valves to go out of adjustment like that? Well, my simple answer to that can be wear and tear. It can also be softer metals which may cause it to prematurely go out of adjustment like that. As you saw in the video, the wind valve was extremely out of adjustment to the point that one push rod had worn a hole through the push rod bracket. I also see other makes of engines that need the valves adjusted regularly. It's basically part of the maintenance of the equipment. Now on some lawnmowers with a flathead engine like this, I rarely if ever have to adjust the valves on them. It's a totally different setup than overhead valve. If your lawnmower starts to backfire or sputter when it warms up, if it's really easy to pull over, or if it's very hard to pull over, like in the video I posted a few weeks ago, then your valves may need to be adjusted. And another question I got from a YouTuber is, why does my Boland's lawnmower surge up and down? Basically what I would suggest him to do is take the carb off, clean it up, put it back together, drain the fuel out of the tank, put fresh gas, and you should be okay. Sometimes all you have to do is take off the bowl by taking the bottom nut out or just draining the bowl, putting fresh gas or draining the old gas through the plug here and then refilling it. It may save you from actually taking the carburetor right off the machine and oftentimes that will do the trick. She'll run. But at other times you're going to have to take the carb right out if it's excessively dirty to get the jets cleaned inside. Now you can also put your carburetor through an ultrasonic cleaner, but if it still doesn't run properly after doing that or cleaning it manually yourself, then just buy a new carburetor. I've had to replace a lot of carburetors, even on lawnmowers with the Honda engine, like this GCV160 engine over here. These carburetors will cost you approximately $40 here in Canada and maybe around $22 to $25 in the US. It just goes to show that sometimes it's not worth wasting your time trying to take them apart over and over again if they don't want to run properly. And for some people who aren't that mechanically inclined, it's probably easier and less aggravating for them to just buy a brand new carburetor and put it on because they're inexpensive. So that'll be it for today's Q&A. Make sure to check out the links under the video. I want to thank you guys for your comments. I may not be able to answer every single question, but if somebody else is reading the comments and can answer it, please go ahead. Have yourselves a great weekend, and you can see me in my next Q&A in two weeks.